Um, yeah, more so time, you know, time to, to be together, time to open up and listen and, and learn. So time's been really important and I think there's still more for us to go through. Um, but yeah, the groups at the moment, um, you know, we've had some great conversation around where to from here and um, how we can make a difference and what that looks like. Um, We've also opened up and we've, we've listened to each other and we've got a better understanding of how everyone's affected in, in what has been a, you know, a really tough week um, across, the, across the league. Where to from here? It's a good question. I mean, it's, we'll just continue to learn, we'll continue to listen and we'll do what we can. I, I'm really optimistic that uh, our group um, have gone through a really tough time in this last week and that they're going to be better, uh, stronger, uh, more educated for it. And I think there'll be a, it'll be really powerful what comes out of this. And I hope, I hope we were able to do what you know, we all intend on doing, which is making a difference. And you know, when you see Eddie speaking in the media and you can see the fatigue, and um, it's, it's our turn now to step up and, and help. When you talk about um, having conversations Yeah. Like oh, well, big picture, of, of course. It's around, it's around how, how people are affected as individuals. Um, stories, you know, why why they're affected that way. Um, really powerful stories, and uh, what it does is it gives a better understanding for those that that are sort of a little bit in the dark about exactly how, how it does affect people and communities. Um, and it's, you know, it was interesting even listening to a number of our non-Indigenous players speak about how the, the week's affected them as well. So uh, it's been a really powerful week for our group. Giving you more clarity about whether reconciliation is possible to get right here where the group sits. Uh, it has. But, uh, look, I, I'm 100% sure that reconcil reconciliation is possible. Um, but it means that we've all got to now step up. We've got to step up, but it's it's 100% possible. Um, just means now we've got work to do. What about the time frame? Is there, are you any closer to formulating a time frame on when those sort of decisions have been made? What decisions are they? In terms of tailoring coming back. Uh, no, we haven't got a date locked in because I don't think you can. I think it just it's it takes time. Um, you know, it's a complex, it's a really difficult um, situation. It's a, it's a difficult um, thing to talk through and it takes time. So, I, no, there's, there's not a time frame around that. <clears throat> I think now, um, you know, the group being able to sit down and talk together, I think sooner rather than later, um, for Tala to be able to sit down and talk with the group would be a positive and, and would help. Um, I think it would help everyone. Um, but again, that's something that at this point in time is not locked in. There's no date with that. Um, I know yesterday was a really um, you know, productive day in the space and that was you know, coming away from that. I think a lot, a lot of people had more clarity around um, you know, possibly where to from here. There was a lot of talk last week about the bravery of the official that reported um, Taylor. Is there any disappointment in Matt Crouch not being one, two, uh, no, nothing's been discussed in that space at all. <coughs> I, I think that's still, it's in line with <coughs> what I've just said. I think time will tell. Um, yeah, on what that looks like. Um, you know, my, my support is there for our entire group. I mentioned that last week, and it's amazing how some people take that. You know, the group is is, is every player and staff member at this organisation. Taylor is one of those. Um, yeah, he belongs in this organisation at the moment. He's in a really 
uh, um, difficult position that he's, um, he's not having the conversations we are at the moment. Um, but I've stayed in contact with him and supported him over the, the last week and kept him up to date on, on how things are progressing at this end. Um, as I have done with all of our staff, you know, constant dialogue around uh, where we are looking to head. Um, and everyone is on the same page. It's just now a matter of how we do that. As I said before, how do we make a difference? How do we step up and, and play an important role in, in changing? No, there's no preference and priority at the moment other than, other than all our people, everybody. That's the preference he's working through. Um, and when you talk to individuals from within our group, uh, you know, they're looking for ways to support Taylor. They're looking for ways to support uh, you know, every team member. So by no means is there a preference or priority on, on any individuals. Yeah, I did, and I, and I actually, um, what was really pleasing was I had former teammates reach out to me. So um, I guess that's where I, I see the, the optimism in, um, if you're trying to take a positive out of what is a really tough time and a, and a negative, um, we now have an opportunity to make a difference. And we've got to, we've got to make sure we do that. So to receive phone calls from um, you know, some superstars of the game that I was lucky enough to play alongside. And, and that phone calls of support, phone calls of, um, you know, happy to listen, um, get a, phone calls to get a better understanding. Um, that, that for me is a positive. That, that for me is now giving us an opportunity to make, to, uh, to make a change. Would you like Taylor to stand where you are and, and talk to the media rather than Uh, preference would have been for Taylor to, yeah, to step up and stand here and, and open up. That, that's tough. I mean, there's, and I don't know the details, but there are details in amongst the conciliation process. And, um, you yeah, know, so I, I can't speak to those, but I do know that there was, that was part of the reason why he hasn't. I'm, I'm sure at, at the right time, Taylor will, will step up and, and, and talk to the media. Um, in saying that, he's not talking to the media, he's talking to the community, talking to the, to the country. But. How's he going? Um, uh, look, it's, it's a really tough time for him. He, he's, you know, um, he would love to be back in amongst the group. He'd love to be sitting there alongside his, his teammates and talking through this. Um, and so that's really what we're working on at the moment is, is finding a way to support him um, the same way we've supported every other person within this organisation and, and we've looked to support people from outside. You know, we've, we've done what we can. We spoke to North Adelaide right off the bat, right from the start. And we'll continue to support them and, and Robbie in, in where to from here. And, um, so it, it is a tough situation and, and he's doing it quite tough at the moment. As I said, we'll continue to support everyone. Carolyn Wilson was reported a couple of times this week that Taylor actually initially denied the allegations and, and uh, it required to be more witnesses to get that proven. Is that your understanding right. of the situation? Uh, well, no, I don't, I don't have an understanding of, of anything prior to the Thursday. Um, I, I won't be privy to any of that. That's obviously confidential what went through as far as the conciliation process goes. Um, I haven't asked Taylor that either, to be honest, because I didn't, I hadn't heard that. Um, whether I do or not in time I, is something that he and I'll sit down and, and talk through. You mentioned last week that you were kept out until Thursday. I think you found out about it on social media. You said on, on Wednesday. Was Wednesday. that part of the process? as to why the coach of a player who had played the week before um, doesn't find out 
until then? Is, it, is that part of just the confidentiality or what? Why were you? I, I, look, I believe that I believe that the privacy and confidentiality of a reconciliation is that only the I guess the executives of the club, when we talk about, in this case, it would have been the, um, Tim Silvers, would have known about um, the process that was taking place and the AFL. Um, so as I wasn't part of that initial uh, proceeding, I, I wasn't then privy to, to any information that was, was going on. Which in itself is a challenge you know, as a coach, obviously, but that's, that's how the rules are set out, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I'm mindful of t making too many comments around that as well because I, I don't know the detail of, of how much information they are have access to and how much of that information is actually just rumour that's flying through through media circles. I, and so I won't comment around that. Just moving up to selection. Yeah, yeah, selection for a bit. Well, that, I was going to ask about that. Sean, he's yeah. clearly come on quite a bit this year at Sanford. They've been in an yeah. impressive form. Um, get too many bigger tasks than coming up against Max. No. How do you sort of see that and I guess his year as well? He played his first game. He debuted against Goldstein. Um, and, and in saying, I mean, with all respect for Goldstein and Gorn, they're both obviously the, the, at the top of their games. A, a lot of sides have a, a very strong number one ruckman. So no matter who he came in against, he was going to um, have a big job. None bigger than Gorn, however, this week. What we have seen from Strawn, he's, um, he's been knocking the door down now for, for a good month. He's been playing great footy at SNFL level. The step up is, is huge, but the, there was a period around four weeks ago where we were close to bringing him into the side. Um, Rob stepped up and you know, that pressure from below forced Rob to take his game to another level and Rob did that to his credit. So um, the opportunity will show itself at a point and that's been my conversation with Strawny over the last month. Has been you continue to play, con um, stay consistent with your form, and the opportunity will show itself. And unfortunately for Riley, um, you know his knee at the moment is is in a position where it's just too it's too risky for us to put him out this week. Um, in fact, you know this is probably something we would hold Riley out for for a month. Um, which ruled him out of the rest of the season. Um, there's too much risk around that, that knee blowing up if, if we do put him out again. So Strawny gets the opportunity to, to come into an AFL game on the MCG against the best ruckman in the competition, and, and he can't wait. He's, uh, he's been smiling and walking around the rooms. He's, he's, he's up and about. Have you got a team for us? Did you know well, we, well, I can give you the obviously the outs are on there. You know, Smith and um, and Ham will go out with with concussion protocol, so they'll they'll continue to go through that. Riley will be out as well, so they're the three. Um, from an in point of view, Shane McAdam will play. Um, we look back over our form, and as a team, we we weren't playing our best footy through a period of time when Shane was playing forward of the ball. Um, he didn't do a lot wrong. He had uh, a spell when we uh, played down in Melbourne and freshened himself up, came back and has showed he's taken his game, or at least his work rate, to another level uh, since being back in the SNFL. So we're really pleased with that. We hope to see that this week, that he's able to bring that, that higher work rate, which we saw um, you know, in his best games. He was, his movement was dynamic. He's, uh, he's got some X factor about him, so hopefully we see that. Um, I don't want to give you too many. Because we don't need to at the moment. Uh, why, why not? Um, is that Lockie Gallant? No, I'd tell you that one. If if someone was going to debut, I'd give you the the debut time. But but Lockie, um, we were actually really close to to bring Lockie in. Lockie came into my office and he had a specific job he thought he could carry out, um, and I love that about him. He's he's a student of the game and um, he doesn't hold back. So. Uh, he came in and asked the question, and, and his form, you know, he's, he's really starting to find his game. So he's not far off, uh, but it won't be this week. Yeah, so how do you pitch to you for a spot? This is what I can do. 
short end. No, not quite in the ruck. You'll have to do that at sample level first. He's, so he's, he's played some roles at SNFL level. He's learning his craft. He's a young key forward that loves jumping at the ball. He's um, you know, similar to Shane. So Shane comes in and plays a role for us. And Lockie was close to, to, to getting a look. Um, but not quite yet. I said to him, I, I smiled and we enjoyed the conversation. And then um, I said, look, he deserved to be in our emergencies list. And um, I'm sure we'll see him sooner rather than later. Uh, there, there's a possibility there, but we are, we are reasonably tall. You know, we've got Elliot ahead of the ball, we've got Riley ahead of the ball. So from a second ruck point of view, um, we do have cover in that space. Um, and Jackson's, I mean, last week was one of his best games and you can see a young, you know, really talented footballer now taking the next step. Um, it takes key position players that little bit longer. It hasn't with him. He's already stepped up into that. So that, that's... You know, you're up against the best ruckman in the competition and probably the best up and coming ruckman. That's a huge challenge for us this weekend. It's like we were saying Lynch go, we were saying Talia go, you guys have a very clear path here to get down to the X place. The next one that we would ask you about is Matt Crouch, you're very clear where you're heading in that area. Well, I'm clear where we want to head in that area. Um, you know, I, I really want Matty at the footy club. And when you, I mean, you mentioned it, you know, for, for Daniel Talia, who's been a, an incredible player for this football club, uh, you know, one of the best defenders in the competition you know, throughout his career, to lose his experience and what, what he adds to our group on field, um, you know, there's, it's important for us to have a balance in that space. Um, Tom Lynch, at the same time, you know, an incredible leader on and off the field. Um, we, we need to now balance out our, our experience that we've got. Um, Matty is also you know, one of our best midfielders this year. We, we haven't been able to see him due to his body not quite holding up. Um, but we know that he'll, he'll fight through that. Um, the conversation's been had really open and honest dialogue all year with, with Matty around where we'd like, what we'd like to see from him. Um, and we're working through that at the moment. I'm, um, use the word optimistic again, I, I, I'd like to think that we, we do come to an agreement with Matty and, and he becomes you know, that really important experience for our midfield um, and sort of steps up alongside Laddie and, and Sloaney as, as our real leaders. Even Ben Keyes has shown that he's now an on and off field leader as well. Uh, yeah, it is. That, that's where it sits at the moment, and um, we've had some great dialogue around that. So, you know, what we, we need to now, as, as you do with these negotiations, come to an agreement on what that looks like. Um, I'm hoping that, that we do that, and that's the case sooner rather than later, so I can come out here and tell you guys about it. No, no. I, Look, as far as I'm aware, Matty's keen to stay. He's, he, he likes the direction we're going in. And again, I don't want to speak for, for Matt, um, but he's given an indication he wants to be at the football club. It's, it's now, it comes down to now a dollars you know, and a contract, and, um, and, that, and that's understandable. That's a player looking for security about, you know, it's a, it's a, a tough, ruthless industry. So I, I totally understand where Matty's coming from. Um, I think he understands where the footy club's coming from, so we're, we'll now continue to work through it. Um, no, not, not when given time. I think, if anything, this year, um, when you have a competitive beast, uh, of an individual like Matty is. Uh, he's so keen to get back out on the track. I think when given the time, um, which we now will have, I think he'll work through that and he'll strengthen up the areas we need to and, and he'll be ready to go for next season. Can I just ask about the showdown loss? Um, was it a lack of instruction or execution that players bomb down the line and let the lead just 
That's the headspace we're in at the moment. Um, before I answer your first part, we've we now come up against, you know, dual threat down there as far as the best intercept markers in the comp. So we didn't get that done last week, and and it, it was both. It was you know when you look at it, um, we all take responsibility for what we didn't get right. Um, we had patches throughout the game that we did that we were able to move the ball well enough. Um, there were some times where uh, he was just too good one on one. You know we had structure and we had set up the way that we planned and we weren't able to execute um, so it was a combination it was a combination we'll um we'll go into this week's game again with a game plan that we feel will will stand up uh, again the challenge in that is executing when it's time to execute and uh, if you give lever too much time and space and let him run and jump at the ball well he's a he's a pretty good footballer so um, more often than not he will execute when that time comes. So that's our challenge going forward. There's, you know, all learnings for us. Can you get one of them just to go sit in row Z or something and take him miles out of the plan? You can try to. Yeah, you can try to. And that's that's part of the game is how do you how do you move these guys and, and take them out of the way? A, a, easier said than done. Um, and Melbourne are a, a fantastic football side. That's why they sit on top of the ladder is that they're not, you know, they're not easily manipulated. Uh, they play... Um, you know, they play a structure that allows them to play the way they do. So um, that's the challenge. Is that potentially what the Lance pitch was around? <laughs> yeah, you've pretty much picked it. <laughs> yeah, Lock Lockie was the man. He was going to step up. And uh, I, I don't doubt he could have. Um, if we win, Clayton Oliver can score as many fantasy points as he wants. Um, and we were lucky last last game to, you know, we were ahead when the final siren went. It was a, it was a great game of footy, and in the end, we I think he got the ten votes from the coaches in that game as well. He was a standout. So we need to we need to limit his impact on the game. Otherwise, we won't win, win the game of football. Um, we know that the challenge comes in, as I said before, it's it's actually executing that. Um, you know, the knowledge can be there of, of how to do it. It's actually been able to do it in the moment. And that'll be our challenge. And when you focus on, on, on one individual, another one steps up. And um, they've got so many you know, high quality players. And that's the game. Unfortunately, we've got to. Uh, look, we're, we're confident if we take our best over there, then, then we can give it a, we'll give it a shot. Uh, what, what can happen with a hard tag is you get pulled apart. Um, in, in saying that, we may at some stage during the game go to a hard tag. We may start that way, but um, we'll see how the game plays out. Um, hopefully, we're not sitting there at 12 possessions in the first quarter and 300 metres gain for, for Oliver, or however many fantasy points that works out to. Uh, but if the scoreboard says five goals to us and none to them, we, we probably won't change much. Thank you, guys. No one expected us to win last time either when we played Melbourne. So we'll go in. Yeah. weird because we, we look we don't look at it the same way we sit down and we discuss our game plan we discuss what we feel will will get the win for us we're pretty confident if we execute that um, the scoreboard will look after itself the execution that's that's the key uh, in, in the moment on game day to actually execute what it is we want to do and we have patches we've shown this year that we have patches in games where we don't um, and if that goes on for too long, then the scoreboard ticks over against you, and that's where the results are going against us. And Showdown was an example of that, where we played some great football right throughout the night, and um, you know we, we had our opportunities to put some scoreboard pressure on, and we didn't. And in the end, we lose by a, 
you know, lose by a kick and um, it goes down as, as a loss rather than a win. So big challenge for us, huge challenge. Um, away from home, MCG uh, against the top side. But um, I think we'll back ourselves in that we play our way, we can, we can get the result. Thank you. Thank you.